Good evening, everyone. As I sit down to record the evening message for this Sunday, uh, our governor has just issued a state lockdown. Um, I know that's going to put a lot of people in a bit of a tizzy. I would encourage you to not let it do that, you know, plain and simple. Uh, it's just a precaution uh, in order to to stem the, the flow of this coronavirus across our state. It's not really that big of a deal. Many essential businesses uh, will still be open. Uh, things that you need to live and survive will be there. And so I greatly encourage folks not to be discouraged. Uh, there is an economic stimulus, stimulus package in the works, and uh, they're endeavoring to do things to, to stem the tide of uh, the economic press upon people. And so, again, just encourage folks not to worry, not to stress out about these things too much. Uh, basically, I mean, if, if you don't need anything, don't go out. You know, I know for some people, they love to socialize, and that's fine. Pick up your phone, call somebody, talk to them on the phone, do that sort of a thing. Uh, FaceTime with them, video chat, do those sort of things if you need to. But uh, but if you don't need to go out, don't. You know, Every time we go out, we're putting ourselves and others at risk. And so let's just be smart about this. I saw on Facebook somebody post, it's kind of like you know, a kindergarten teacher uh, waiting to, to uh, let the kids out for recess. And until they're all quiet, they can't go. And so every time someone peeps up, there goes another minute of recess gone by. And that's kind of like what it is. You know, so many people are doing what we're supposed to, but there's just those few that, you know, refuse to do what's right. And because of it, we keep missing another minute of recess. And so uh, there's a little bit of truth to that. And so let's just kind of sit back for a little bit and uh, stem this tide. As I said this morning, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, we will get beyond this. It might take a while, but we'll get beyond it. In life, as we know, it, we'll get back to uh, what we used to know. Okay. Just remember those people that are out there that are still working, like at gas stations and banks and grocery stores and such, you know, be courteous in them. You know, that's like you know, many of them would, some of them, I guess, would, you know, prefer to stay home, but they, their businesses are still open and so they're still working and uh, they put themselves at risk every time. Uh, certainly, nurses, doctors that work in hospitals, you know, put themselves at extreme risk. And so uh, lift them up in prayer, those that are working and that are out in the public and perform a public service. You know, keep them in your prayers and just ask the Lord to, to place a protection about them to, to keep them protected from uh, this virus and the exposure to this virus that they face. Uh, that's the, one of the best things that we uh, can do. And so I just thought I'd say a little bit about that as we prepare for this evening's message. On Sunday nights at the church, we just started looking at the tabernacle, and uh, that's what we were going to do. And so, but I'm gonna uh, shy away from that just a little bit, as I'd like to be able to get together and and to examine the the tabernacle model that we've, that I'm still putting together. Not quite done on that either, and such. But uh, and so I thought we'd just put that aside for a little bit and just try and look at some encouraging note, notes or things like that, to, just to be a source of hope and encouragement to us in these times that we live. Uh, this, this evening, I want to look at Psalm uh, chapter 40. I'm just going to read verses 1 through 5. Uh, just a very simple thought this evening, not anything in great depth or detail, but uh, just to let us know that uh, God's still watching out for us. He truly is. And so let's read our scripture. If you have your Bibles there, you can turn with me, as I said, to Psalm chapter 40. And I just want to read verses uh, 1 through 5. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me, and heard my cry. He brought me up out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it, and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside their lies. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done. And thy thoughts which are to usward, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. And if I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. And basically, I just want to look at that first verse where he said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Uh, those are the things that I want to look at this morning. Hang on a second. Let me turn my phone off. Sorry. Rookie. But those are the thoughts. Just kind of three thoughts that I want to look at this, this evening as we look at this passage of Scripture. Uh, the first part of that is, is he says, I waited patiently. Uh, the psalmist here, a psalm of David, my Bible says, and this is, this is written by Psalm of David to the chief musician. And uh, it says that the first thing David says is that I waited patiently for the Lord. 
uh, that's something we all need to do, not just now, but always, you know, to wait upon the Lord. The Bible is uh, replete with verses that uh, encourage us to wait upon God, to wait patiently for him until he does that thing which he's going to do. Uh, there are many stories in the Bible of people who didn't wait for God. They didn't wait for God to move to do the things uh, that he was going, said he was going to do, and it got them in big trouble. All the way back to Abraham and, and, and Sarah, as they didn't wait for God to fulfill the promise to, to give him a child. And so it caused problems for them. I think of the Israel's first king, King Saul. He didn't wait for Samuel to come uh, to make the sacrifice before going to battle and decided to do it himself. And uh, because of it, he lost his kingship. And so, again, those are just a couple of examples. But uh, so many times we want to get ahead of God and do things our own way. Uh, because we want answers now. By nature, we as humans are not patient people. I'm not a patient person many times. I've tried to be more patient over the years. Uh, but uh, anyway, and so we're just not naturally patient. And so the psalmist here, again, David, he's encouraging us to wait patiently uh, for the Lord. Uh, none of this escapes God. Every none, Nothing. Let me just say that. Nothing escapes God. He knows what's going on. Uh, he holds this world in his hands. And uh, these things that happen, uh, he knows about them. Uh, I've had this question asked to me so many times over the last couple of weeks. Is, Pastor Brian, do you think that this is the end times? And and I would have to say, absolutely not. And, and they're like, oh, okay. And when they press me, oh, well, how come? Why don't you think it's the end times? I, says, I, well, I always tell them, he says, well, uh, as, as I read the Bible, it's going to be a whole lot worse than what it is now uh, when the end truly does come. And they're like, oh, that's really encouraging. But anyway, do I think these are the end times? No. Uh, the Bible encourages us to know the signs of the time. And certainly we're heading in that direction. Each day we are closer to the Lord's return. If you listen to my message this morning, the most important thing in your life is to know that you're saved. Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior? And if you're saved, you really have nothing to worry about. No matter what uh, this life or anything throws at us, if we trust in Jesus as our Savior, when that time comes, uh, we will be with him. We will be in his presence for all of eternity. And so uh, it's not really something that we need to worry about. Uh, we don't need to fear death or dying or anything of that nature. I know that my life is in his hands. And when that time comes, uh, I'll go. I'll be prepared. I do live my life each day to the fullest. I love my wife, love my kids, and I love my family. I try to make a difference in my community, in my church, you know, doing everything that I possibly can each and every day, following the leadership of God and His Holy Spirit. And I know at, it, at the end of each day when I lay my head down that, you know, I'm confident. I try to live my life the best that God would have me to live, and I'll leave all the rest up to Him. There's nothing really that I need to, to worry about. Uh, but again, getting back to our message, he says, I waited patiently for the Lord. That's really all that we need to do in this time is to wait patiently upon God. And, and you know, and as God uh, speaks to our heart, as he ministers to our heart, as as we pray, and that's one of the ways that God does speak to us is as we pray, he does speak to us. And uh, we, we can do, you know, we don't hear an audible voice or anything like that. But I think God does minister to our hearts. But, you know, he'll use, how does he use? What is it, some of the things that God uses to, to speak to us? And and I firmly believe his scriptures, you know, as we read the Bible and as we get into the Holy Scriptures, that, that those speak to us. I don't know how many times I've, I've had a question or something or concern upon my heart. And as just as I'm doing my daily devotions, nothing, you know, out of the ordinary, not really reading anything extra or different, just doing my daily devotions right there. Uh, lo and behold, is the answer to my question. Many times, you know, as I have my daily devotions and read the scriptures that, you know, it's like God gives me an answer in advance. You know, something that's already going to happen that day. I didn't know about it, and, and I'll be able to use it and apply it to my life. And so that's, the scriptures is one way that God speaks to us. God uses people around us so many times when I've had a, a question or a need or whatever, and I pray about it. And, you know, it's like the Lord sends somebody my way <clears throat> to be an answer to my prayer. Uh, that's why I say, you know, whenever, if, if God has laid something upon your heart to do for somebody or to say to somebody, uh, then by all means act upon that because you could be the answer to their prayers. And so, uh, that's what God does. Uh, he ministers to us and through uh, his word, through uh, other people and many other ways. Just the, the Bible even says that very nature, this creation that we live in cries out of God. And so many times we can see answers to our questions right here in, in, in this just nature that we live. And so there's many ways. Uh, but the key is that we wait patiently for the Lord. Not an easy thing uh, to wait patiently, but that's what he's encouraging. Not just to wait for the Lord, to wait patiently. You know, if we fret and stew and worry and stomp and stamp and do all those things, well, that's not waiting patiently. And and and, and when the answer comes, we might miss it. 
you know, the Bible tells us that God speaks in that still small voice. And so uh, if we're not waiting patiently, we may miss that answer. So we truly do need to learn to learn to wait patiently for the Lord. Um, in James chapter 5, verse 7, the Bible says, uh, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and the latter rain. Basically, that verse is saying is that, you know, we might look at this world and say, well, God, why don't you fix this or change this or do that? Or uh, It's because there's God's doing a work in this world. And, and every day uh, there are people that are coming to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Every day there are Christians that are surrendering their lives, perhaps some ministry or just getting their lives right and fixing themselves and their families. And so that's what God's doing. And so he's just patiently working in the hearts and lives of people. You know, we might look at it and say, well, God, you should do these things now. Uh, but hey, you, you try to get these billions of moving parts to work together. It's not easy. It's not an easy task. And God is not in the business of forcing people to do anything or think anything or feel anything. Uh, he wants us to come to him of our own free will, uh, to give uh, cheerfully, not just finances, but to give of ourselves cheerfully to the Lord. OK, uh, but I like that, you know, when it comes to uh, God meeting us or dealing with our issues. Again, he said, I waited patiently, waited patiently, excuse me. I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and he heard my cry. You know, as we're waiting for God to hear our cry, uh, so many times we think we've got to find God. And so we spend so much time running around and searching and looking and trying to find him. But notice that's not what David said. He just said, I just, I stopped and waited is all I did. I waited patiently. And so what I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that we don't have to find our way back to God. We don't have to do that. We just got to stop running. How hard is that? Just stop running. Stop running away from God or stop running in general. Just sit still for a moment. You know, they always tell people all the time, you tell kids, if you get lost or you get uh, separated from your parents or whatever, then what are you supposed to do? Stop. Just sit down and they will find you. And so if we're running around, then how are we ever going to meet God? And so that's what David's trying. Listen, you don't have to find your way back to God. You don't have to find the answers. Just wait. And God will bring the answers to you. He'll bring what you need. That's what he's trying to get across to us. Uh, one thing I've learned in life is God is not in a hurry. I think we all know that. And, you know, to, to, to God, time means nothing. He is an eternally existent God, has always been and always will be. And so time has no meaning to him. It means everything to us. We live our lives according to time, according to a schedule, uh, our work schedules, our school schedules. And so we have these things going on in our lives. Uh, but my friends, uh, God's not in a hurry. He's truly not. Uh, and, and he will wait for us to tire ourselves out, plain and simple. If we're going to insist on running around and fretting and stewing and stuff, he'll just sit back and wait. And the longer we go through these, the longer our answers are going to wait. It's just best for us to stop running, sit still, and allow God to meet us where we are. And he'll answer those prayers. He'll do a great thing in our life, okay? And so he says, I waited patiently for the Lord. Can we do that today? Can you do that? Can you wait patiently on the Lord? Uh, maybe some days it's easier than others, <laughs> you know? Uh, maybe when things are going well, it's all right. But when things aren't going well, not so all right. And so, but whatever. Let's learn to wait patiently for the Lord. Then the next thing it says there, it says that he, God, inclined unto me. Now, that word inclined means to literally to like stretch out or to, to reach out for, okay? And so I, personally, I feel like God is always stretching out his hand. He's always reaching out for us, okay? And again, if we're running around, uh, we're not going to see it. We're going to know it. But if we sit still and wait patiently, God will stretch out. He'll reach out to us. And so when he does... Then when God stretches out, when he inclines unto us, when he leans into us, however you want to look at that, okay, to incline, you know, a lot of times you think inclining your ear, you know, you hear a juicy piece of gossip, ooh, you know, we, we get real quiet and we incline our ear so that we can hear. Maybe we even take a cup and put it to the door. <laughs> uh, but that's what that word incline, you know, and so that's what we do. And so if we'll be still and listen, then God can incline to us. He stretches out to us. He reaches out to us, and we in turn uh, can reach out to him as always. But as I said, I feel like God is always reaching out to us every day of our lives, every moment of our lives. That Holy Spirit is, is reaching out and drawing and, and trying to guide us and direct us in the way that he'd have us to go. Very gently. That's how God does things. He's not forceful, I guess, unless we need it. You know, I joke around in church sometimes. Maybe sometimes we need God to take a two by four and smack us upside the head to get our attention. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, you know, so God, he's always reaching out for us. All we have to do is, is like it says in Psalms 46, verse 10, where it says, be still and know that I am God. 
And if we'll do that, if we'll be still, then we can see how God is reaching out to us, how God is inclining to us. We'll see that. We'll see those verses of Scripture. Maybe we'll hear that song on the radio that'll speak to us. Maybe we'll cross paths with that person that gives us the answer to our problems that we have, okay? And so God is always stretching out. We need to stretch out back to Him, okay? And we need to reach back out to Him, meet Him halfway, if you will, that kind of a thing. Uh, Are you willing to stretch out to God today? Are you willing to reach out to Him so that God can do a thing in your life? Uh, But God is always, I believe, reaching out to us, even when we don't see it. A lot of times, you know, I, I say this many times, I've always liked it, and many of us do, that that Footprints in the Sand poem. You know, so many times, the poem, you know how it goes, but it goes through life, and we see the two sets of footprints. That he says, except for the hard times in my life, Lord, I only saw one set of footprints. Why did you leave me? And many times, that's how we feel. When things are going wrong, we feel like God has left us. Uh, but what does God say? He says, no, I didn't leave you. That's when I picked you up and carried you. You know, we don't realize that so many times that God is the one that has to pick us up and carry us and bring us to that place that we need to be, okay? And so just be still, be patient, stretch out to him, and he'll incline unto us. And then the third part of that verse, and then it says, and he heard my cry. That's the part we want, you know. Uh, We all want to hear our, you know, have our voices heard. We want our our prayers to be heard. We want God to, to hear what we have to say. You know, you get in any kind of a group conversation, although we're not supposed to do that right now. But anyway, we get any kind of a group conversation. Everybody, you know, wants to speak up. And sometimes, especially when a bunch of men get together, we always try to out talk each other or talk over the other guy and, you know, one up him in our stories and stuff. My fish was this big. Well, mine was this big. Well, mine was this big, you know. And so we try to out talk everybody. And that's kind of funny. Uh, But uh, we all want to have our voices heard. We all want, you know, for, you know, for God to hear us. We want to know uh, that he hears us. But this is a promise from God is that he does hear us. I wrote this down in John, 1 John, not John, 1 John <clears throat> chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. The Bible says this, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. That's just one time in the Bible that is promised. There are many other places where scriptures promise that God does hear us. God is listening to our prayers. And anytime we call out to him, he will hear our prayers. There's no doubt about that. You know, sometimes we may feel like our our prayers are falling on deaf ears, or I've I've heard people use the illustration that our prayers are bouncing off the ceiling and coming back down to us. Uh, But I can guarantee you, and I can promise you, not because I am smart, but because the Holy Scriptures say, the Word of God says and promises, and I'm smart enough to know uh, that I trust the Bible, to trust the Word of God, that it is God's inerrant Word, uh, that it says He hears us. Again, time and time again, many places within Scripture, it says that God does hear our prayers. He does hear what we have to say. And so that's, to me, that's key. It's important to know. So just keep praying, you know, keep lifting. He will hear you. And then the second part of that equation, though, is it <laughs> is this, okay? The only way, listen, people always ask, is there anything God cannot do? Well, let me give you kind of one, okay? The only way that God cannot hear your prayers is if you don't voice them. Amen? If you don't speak them, he's not going to hear them. You say, well, preacher, he knows my thoughts. He knows my heart. Yes. But the Bible says it says that we are supposed to make our petitions known unto him. We are supposed to voice them. God wants us to speak our prayers. And so if you want to be heard, you've got to speak up. You know, as I mentioned this morning, I'm a bit of an introvert, and so I'm not always the one to speak up. Yeah, it's kind of funny that I stand in a pulpit and preach him and doing it for almost 28 years now. But, you know, it's what God called me to do. And he gives me the grace and the strength to do it. I'm thankful for it. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm basically a quiet person, but I'm not afraid to talk to God. You know, I, I'm not afraid to voice my, my words to him and uh, to lift up my prayers before him. And I don't, I don't, I've encouraged people throughout the years, you know, don't hold back in your prayers. God, as I, as I said, God does know our thoughts. He does know our heart. And so, you know, don't, so many times we feel like we have to, you know, say these nice, pretty little prayers. But, you know, God hears the ugly ones, too. He, he hears the pretty ones, but here's the ugly prayers when we're crying and, and it's not throwing out your nose because you're just so discouraged or down or depressed or whatever. It doesn't matter. You know, pour out your heart. You know, don't try and sugarcoat it. He's a big God. He can take it. I heard someone tell me one time, I was telling them this, and they're like, well, isn't that disrespectful to God? Like, no, not at all. It's like you're being honest with him. You're being honest with yourself, and, and it's cleansing for yourself, cleansing in your own soul. 
And so and the only way God's not going to hear us is if we don't voice our prayers. And if you pretty it up and dumb it down, what good is that going to do? Okay, pour out your heart. Read the Psalms. Read the words of David. David poured out his heart. He cried out to God. That's what we need to do. We need some more crying out and some more pouring out if we want God to truly hear and understand. We mean business. We're serious about this, you know. And if we pretty it up, I was like, oh, okay, they're all right, you know. It's like so. Anyway, the only only way God cannot hear our petitions is if we don't voice them, okay? Uh, now, <laughs> the other part of that, though, is when God hears us, as John said there, if we ask anything in accordance to, to his will, okay? And that, that is key, you know, just because you ask for something from the Lord, from the Lord doesn't mean you're going to get it. If any of you, if you've ever raised children, you understand what I'm saying, because kids, it, you know, I mean, you think about it in, in your child's lifetime, how many times have they asked you for things, you know, two, three, four, five, I don't know, a dozen times every day. Can I have this? Can I have this? Can I do this? Can I go there? You know, and as a parent, you know, we're, we're supposed to try and know what's best for them and, and, and when to say yes and when to say no and when to pick our battles and that sort of a thing. You know, every once in a while, yeah, sure, we might let them have a second cookie or whatever, but we try to protect our children best we can, try to help them to make good choices and good decisions. And God's going to do the same thing. You know, when we pray and ask for things from him, if it's not accordance to his will, if it's not in our best interest, which in turn will be in the best interest of everyone else around us, uh, then certainly God's not going to, you know, he's not going to give you the answer you want. He's going to answer your prayer, but he's usually, as, as as I'm sure you've heard before, God answers our prayers in three ways. He either says yes, no, or wait. <laughs> and so we like the yeses, but sometimes he does say no. You know, many times I could, if I wanted to, I could sit right now and, and tell you many times that God has said no to me. I've been in this current ministry for, as I said, almost 28 years now. And there's, I've had a lot of thoughts and dreams and visions and goals and desires and prayed about them and turned them over to the Lord. And the Lord just flat out said, no, it's not what I want for you, Brian. And I was like, you know, it's frustrating at the time, but I look back and I'm, I'm thankful. You know, it's like God knew what was best. So I just trust him. Just keep moving forward. He just he keeps giving me vision, visions and dreams and we just keep turning them over to him. But we voice those things to him and we try to make sure that we follow the will of God. So God knows what's best for him. We just need to learn to trust him. Trust in the Lord with, with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Psalms chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. And so, important piece of scripture right there. And so, uh, we need to be patient, number one. Uh, number two, we need to stretch out to God. Number three, we need to speak up. And then one little thought that I had, really not part of this verse, but one last thought then, is then we need to receive him. We need to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to receive the answers. You know, many times we get an answer, and if it's not an answer we like, we don't receive it. We reject it. You know, we reject the God's answers. We reject the Holy Spirit. We reject what God's trying to do in our life, and we still do what we want. Well, what good is that going to achieve? What good is that going to accomplish if we don't do what God would have us to do? Receive Him. There's a verse in the book of Revelation towards the beginning of Revelation, Revelation chapter 3, verse 3. Very familiar passage. As soon as I start reading it, you're like, oh yeah, I know that passage. But it says this, Revelation 3, 3. It says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Okay. And he says, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. And that's what God's doing. As I said, I believe that God is always stretching out to us. He is always inclining towards us. And when we learn to be patient and be still and sit still, and listen and be quiet, then we'll see that and we'll know that. Okay, and we'll hear that knock at the door. We'll hear that still small voice. Okay, that's the first part. He says, if any man hear me, we've got to hear God. We've got to hear him. The only way we can hear him is if we hush, if we be quiet, if we be still and allow God to speak to us and minister to us and, and to wait patiently for those answers. Okay, and this is all part of receiving him. So we have to be quiet. If we're going to receive him, if we're going to receive the answers and get the answers that we need, then we truly do need to be quiet. That's the first part of that. We need to hear him. You know, many times it's my wife, she'll tell me something and granted my hair is kind of going in my older age and stuff like that, but I don't hear things the way I should. And a lot of times that's because I'm distracted. I'm maybe doing something else or, you know, thinking or reading or whatever. Maybe I fell asleep. Who knows? Okay. Uh, but if I don't hear, then it's no good. And and then she'll be like, don't you remember when I told you? And I'm like, no, nah, it's not that. I don't remember that. And so she may have told me, but I don't remember because I wasn't truly hearing and so we need to hear God. We need to just get quiet and listen and allow God to minister. That's the first part of receiving him. Is he hear him? Hear what the answers are. And then the second part is open. He says, if you will hear me and open the door. That's the key is to open him, you know, to, to realize that his way is best, that what God 
does or what God wants to do is best for me. And so we open that door. That act of opening the door is like an act of surrender, of act of, of allowing God in, you know, of opening our heart and our life to him and allowing God to come in and do a great thing in our life, whether it's first for salvation, when we open the door of our heart and say, Lord Jesus, save me, or even as a Christian on our daily walk, when we say, Lord, please take control of my life. Control my thoughts, my actions, my words. Use me as an instrument, as a vessel to carry forth your word and minister to the people in this world that we live. And so just some thoughts tonight from this passage of scripture. I waited patiently for the Lord. Uh, Are you waiting patiently on God? Are you truly doing that? Are you waiting at all? And then he says, he inclined unto me. God is reaching out to you. Will you reach out to him? It says he heard my cry. God hears us today. Do you believe that? I do. I believe God hears our prayers A lot of times we just don't like the answers. And then, as I said, finally, one last thought, thought, though, is that we do need to receive him, receive the answers uh, that God gives to us. I hope and pray that you'll do that. Okay. All right. Hope this was a blessing to your hearts tonight. Again, let me let me close in a word of prayer. Uh, Someone asked me, you're going to sing songs. I don't know. Maybe we will. If enough people say, hey, pastor, why don't we sing a song? Well, we could do that, too. You know, I like to sing. So but let's close in a word of prayer. And I'll pray, you know, that God will watch over uh, each of us individually in our state and just the things that are going on. Let's pray. Our God and our Father in heaven, Lord, again, I thank you for your word, and I thank you for how you minister to and speak to our hearts through your word. Uh, It's such a blessing to have the comfort of scriptures today, Father. And uh, again, Lord, as our governor has issued a a state lockdown of such, I just pray for our state. Uh, He's just trying to do what he thinks is best for us to to stem the spread of this virus in our state. And, And as we see as it's spreading in other states more rapidly, it looks like it's working. So we just pray that folks would be patient and just wait and endure uh, as we get through this and uh, as we get beyond the cold and flu season and get into our summers and perhaps a life a little bit more normal. But I just pray, God, that you would eradicate this virus. Uh, Lord, I know this doesn't escape you. Uh, and I know that you could do a great and a powerful thing. Pray for those scientists that are out there trying to find the vaccination or some sort of a treatment for it. And so just pray for them for wisdom. I pray again for all those that are on the front lines, especially the nurses and the doctors that are out there every day and are confronted with this on a daily basis. Pray that you would protect them and keep them safe. And so many people that are working in the public and and, and, and retail and things like that, just pray for their protection and their safety as well. Uh, Father God, again, we just thank you so much. Uh, We know that this doesn't escape you. And our hearts are joined with so many others in prayer. Just praying, Lord, so many families have been touched by this virus and some have lost loved ones. And so we just ask, Lord, that you would be with them and that you would do a great thing. And that truly, Lord, you would stay uh, this this virus. I know that you can do it. And we just trust that you will, Father. We're just going to thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, folks. You all have a great night, okay?